Hey everyone, welcome to my channel Code with Me. My name is Prajesh, and in this video, I'll show you how we can generate the API code from the API documentation. If you haven't worked with OpenAPI, please go through my previous video where I have explained all about it. In this video, we will see from the existing document how can we generate the API code. Here, from the Swagger editor, we have options to generate the code for the server and also to generate the code for the client. If we have to generate the server code, we can select different languages. For now, we want to generate the code for Spring Boot application, so let's select Spring. As soon as we select Spring, it will generate the code and it will download it. The same code I have imported, so here we have Spring server generated. And this consists of one of the home file where we have all the dependencies related to Spring Boot as well as dependencies related to the Swagger documentation. In the package, you can see here we have the io.swagger.api. Within that, we have a couple of classes. Similarly, we have configuration and we have model. In the API package, we have the employees API. It has the annotations related to the open API. So all of this we have defined in our API. Like here you can see we have the employee API. It has the description, contact detail, license detail, etc. And then the APIs. All of this thing has been defined in the class. And then we have the API that returns the employee response DTO and it takes the employee request DTO as an input. So for this, we have the model classes as well. We have request DTOs and the response DTOs within the model. All of this code has automatically generated for us. Here we have the Swagger to Spring Boot. This is a main class. So if we run this class, it has started the Tomcat server on port 8080. With the application, we have got one more controller, which is home controller and this controller has the swagger ui so from the root path you can access the swagger ui if we do so here you can see we have the swagger ui and now you can test any of api like we have the get api so we need to test it we need to pass the id and when pass this so it has returned the response so this is the dummy response which is being returned from the api here we have the API controller, which is the implementation of the employee API interface. Now you can see here we have the dummy response. So it is generating the response based on the sample that we have passed in our API documentation. Similarly, for all of the API, it has returned the sample response. If you are working in a new project, then you can just generate the code from the Swagger editor and then you can enhance the code by implementing the business layer. But if you have the existing project, then this approach might not work. You have the existing code base and you should have the possibility to generate the API layer. We have that plugin available and here we have the Gradle Swagger Generator plugin. Using this plugin, we can generate the code for our APIs. Let's see that. So here, instead of this generated code, now I would like to use my existing project. So we have one project, multi-module setup. In this, we want to generate the API code. So within this service, we don't have any code as of now. And based on the API documentation, we want to generate the code. To use the plugin, we just need to add the plugin. Let's copy this and add build.gradle file. Also, we need to add the dependencies. So here we can add dependencies. Here we have a couple of dependencies. Based on the Swagger version, we can pick one of these. So we have the code gen v2, v3, and we have for open API. Let's copy the last one. And here we have this Swagger code gen. We also need to add certain configurations. So let's copy these configuration from here. This has the input file. This is the API documentation file. In our case, we have the employee API doc. Let's copy this. This is within the resources, so let's add the full path. We need to generate the code for Spring Boot, so the language is Spring. Similarly, if we have to generate the code for Kotlin or any other thing, we can specifically set that language. Now, we have the Swagger sources, and 
instead of this pet store because we have the employee related API so let's change it employee you can change it to any name whatever you want based on this name the folders will be generated and now we need to run the task and here we have the generate swagger code you can see here we have this generate swagger code we have the employee service where we need to run this task so this is the gradle task that we are running on employee service okay so task has been executed successfully and you can see here it has created lots of files so these files are created within a build folder here we have swagger code and employee this is the employee that we have defined here within this we have the src main java and within java we have a couple of folders like org open api tools and within that we have api package configuration package and the model package this is the same structure as we have seen in the code that has been generated from the swagger editor one benefit of using this plugin is if we need to change the package structure like here we have the org open api tools because we are generating this code in our existing project so we might have the existing package structure right for that we can add certain configuration with the code we can add the config and for adding the config we need to add the config file and here we can just give the path of our config file let's copy this path i have already defined one config in our resources so here we have the config.json within this we have the library spring boot we can use the spring mvc or anything else based on the code that we want to generate we have model package by default it is or open API tools dot model which we can change to compress DTO and you can change it according to your package structure similarly we have API package that is what we have defined here com dot press dot controllers and invoker package is com dot press here we have this now let's run these generate swagger code all right the code has been generated and now we have Java com and we have the code within the specified packages. If you are doing it for the first time, you can just copy this code into your main folder. Or if you don't want to do that, you want this code to be as a generated code only, then you can add the configuration in your build to include the build in your source. We will copy this and we will paste this into our main folder. So let's copy this Java package and here within main we can just copy this so we have got the controllers we have got the dto's and then we have the spring boot application plus some of the configuration here in the build you can see we have application properties this application properties file we need so here we have the documentation swagger v2 path which is api docs server port this is by default 8080 if you want to change anything you can do that then we have the date formatter and we have the other configuration i have already copied this whole thing here and also in the build we have the pom.xml so it has the spring boot related dependencies plus the swagger related dependencies you will need all of these dependencies in your build.gradle file i have this multi module setup so already all of these dependencies are there we can just run the main file here and if you run this all right so it has started the server in the same way it has home controller where we have the swagger ui.html so we can access the api the same way there is a possibility that while doing our development we might have some changes in our api documentation for this change if we generate the code again it will generate everything if we want to restrict the generation of the code for our TTO objects only, then we can define that configuration in our build. And here we can add the components. And within this list, we can pass the models. Run the task again. Let's look at the build. Here, now we have only the TTO object. So we need not to copy everything. We can just pick specific changes that has been made. Similarly, if we need to add the apis then within the build.gradle we can also add the apis so here in the build it has also added the controller so it did not 
generate the this configuration and the main classes and everything it has just generated the change which we have asked for so with your existing project if you need to change anything you can just use this option this is all about this video if you enjoyed watching this video please like share and subscribe and also press the notification bell icon to get the latest update on my new videos till then happy coding